the delay, but unfortunately our adversaries are very vigilant. So we have to thank everybody who contributed in any small or bigger way to helping set up or paying for the CM or bringing food for the CM, which is almost everyone deserves a thanks. And i sorry I can't list you individually. Of course, my wife has the biggest thanks, but that's besides the point. So I'm, I'm glad someone asked why we have to have the women here if they can't see, et cetera. So if anyone wants to have us move the uh, mechitza even slightly so you can see a little bit better, please tell me from the women's side. Um, otherwise, the main thing that I feel that I, w when I was in a cola that we used to make a seum like every year or every other year, um, it was encouraged for all the women to come and the children to come because the women are half of our success. If a woman doesn't send her wife, her husband to learn, very often the husband finds other things to do. Or if even worse, a woman gives him all sorts of jobs to do, like go do this and that and the other, he doesn't have time to learn, then he also doesn't end up coming to Samanapshi. And it's not just in our kol, I'm telling you in the kol that I used to learn at, which is considered a very, very uh, hardworking and uh, dedicated kol, the women still get a big shakoyach, as Rabbi Kiva even said to his wife, Shali Shalach. So that's the first thing, is we want to thank all the women who did come, and any woman who couldn't make it should still receive our thanks indirectly. I hope you let your wives know that I'm personally thanking them for giving you the push to learn, the environment that you feel you want to learn, and hopefully the praise which you deserve for learning. That's partially why a woman is Zoycha, Tchia Samesi Mugmor says, because she doesn't have the Tal Torah, but she does encourage her children and her husband to learn, and that is a great schus that women have. Okay, just one second. Please do not bring any meat to the, to the milking table. Please either eat on another table or whatever. Sorry to do that to you. Um, now, I just want to say a very short Dabar Torah about the sukkah. We don't have a lot of time because we don't want to waste Rav Shatz's time. He came to us specially. We have a special car still for Rav Shatz, who is in shot with us, with us every other week. And in the, and, and the Simpsons space of Shuev, he came. And uh, he's here today with us as well. So I, I, all I want to say is that the Masekta is an amazing Masekta. I've actually learned it a few times, taught it a few times, and it never gets old, as Torah never does get old. But especially this Masekta, I believe, t talks to us on our own level in our day and age, where so many things crop up in our lives, and they seem to be things that are anti-Torah or not letting us to do our mitzvahs. And, and Sukkah really comes and says just the opposite, that there's a mitzvah where I want you to go in and your entire body will be doing the mitzvah. You, every, every act that you do in a sukkah becomes a mitzvah. That's the prelude to the whole sector is that we can make our lives a kind of a life where everything we do is a mitzvah. Even if we have to run to do an error, but we're doing a l'shem shemaim, that becomes a mitzvah. We eat, but it's in order to get strength to learn so we can do more mitzvahs and learn more Torah. Everything can be a mitzvah. That's what the, the sukkah teaches us. And then we go on to the third and third parak about the Arba meaning. It also teaches us that everything in the world, no matter if it's some bush somewhere that it looks like, who would even look at that bush if you're walking down a path? But here the Torah says, elevate it, bring it, wave it in front of me, and tell me how much you love me. And that to me is worth everything. That even if all I, all I have is a, a twig to wave in front of a shem, at the end of Sukkot, we just wave a rubbles. And the Gemara says that that actually emanates from a minhag that was much earlier, all the way back to the base of Migdash, where there was a separate mitzvah with the Arabas, because the Arabas represent even the lowest of lowest of Jews, it's still elevated to a high level. Every Jew, no matter what he looks like to you, the simplest Jew, someone want to get the close law from Mr. Bromwich, please? Just have to stand there. Thank you. So every Jew, no matter what they look like to your naked eye, they have a Jewish neshama, they have the shame Hashem, like it says, Karasa Alenush Shimcha Hagadol. He called upon us. He called upon us his name. Our name is written, Hashem's name is written upon every Jew. That's what the Arava teaches us. That's what the Arba Minim teaches us. And every act that we do, again, to help each Jew, to help elevate the Jews around us because of the shame Hashem that's on them, also is a way of showing that idea. 
And, the, and then leads us up to the Beis Hamikdash. And all of the sec last two prokim have to do with the Beis Hamikdash. It's a beautiful way to end the Masechta, even though the very final story we'll hear in a minute is a little bit tragic, and it leads into Hanukkah, as we are now exactly in the time right before Hanukkah. It's very sure that Sukkah leads into Hanukkah. The end of the Masechta leads into Hanukkah. So we have this idea of a bit of a tragedy of losing the Beis Hamikdash. But Sukkah teaches us that by doing, leading our lives in such a way that all of our acts can be a mitzvah. Every Jew has to be elevated to that, to shame Hashem and to respect. That leads us to the base of Midrash. It can lead us back to the base of Midrash. And that's the place where most of the mitzvahs of Sukkah really were done. Although today we miss that. But we do a bit of a reenactment with the Hashanahs and different things. We try to reenact it to some extent. So don't, don't walk in front of the video. So we have... All these things which lead us to the base of Megdash, which is what Sukkah leads us to. And of course, at the very end, we can see a tragic end to that sometimes, but it's a reminder that this is what we need to do to keep on track to bring the, the final base of Megdash. So again, I want to thank everyone, especially the people who helped us finish this Masekta, which includes the women, of course, and everybody here who came and participated even in a small part of the Masekta. I thank you from the bottom of my heart, because not only it gives me a good feeling to know that all of my efforts aren't in vain that it leads to some higher level of people's uh, appreciation of Torah and knowledge of Torah and, and involvement in Torah. But hopefully, the help the Chayel Chayel, we can go on to sucking. I don't know if we'll make a museum on sucking is a lot longer, but at least, hopefully, we have the energy from the seal to start tomorrow, a new Masechta, and put our, all of our hearts and all of our soul into it. And hopefully, we'll come into Pesach in six months in a very, <coughs> sorry, I have to mention that we're coming on just a few, few months from now, so case I should get nervous, right? But we'll be much more prepared for it halachically, and our minds will be much more prepared for, for Pesach, and hopefully, if we want, we can continue after Pesach, but that's, that's a bit of a question, so we'll have to plan that out. Thank you very much. Tisco Le Mitzvah. Yechi. Go ahead. Go ahead.
I'll just say quickly the first line of the next Mishnah that we're starting, Or Lar Ba'asar, in the light of the 14, which some say means the night, but we don't like saying that's an evil word. Mazel tov, mazel tov, many more Masechah. Mazel tov, mazel tov. Maybe you can join us for the next Masechah. And it says, Bo'ot kinas ha-chametz l'or ha-ner. And we check for chametz with the light of a candle. And, Merit Hashem, we have many months now to discuss that important topic. Go ahead, go ahead. Rav Shach. Rav Shach will now speak, Mizrat Hashem. Where did he go? Did we lose him? Is he here? Did he walk in?